Hello, welcome to the Grace Kid Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Kyler, and today I have two very special guests with me, and they're going to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Isabel. I'm in sixth grade, and I am 11 years old. Hi, my name is Preston. I'm in second grade, in my, in my, and I'm seven years old. Perfect. Awesome. And uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right. So before we get into our story for today, I have a question of the day as usual. So the question for you to ask whoever you're listening to this with is, what is the best thing to eat for lunch? So ask whoever you're listening to this with, and we'll be right back with our answer. Jesus is calling. Open your eyes. back so isabel what is the best thing to eat for lunch after uh, <clears throat> after church i like to eat cactus grill and like any other day i like to eat, eat jersey mike's Ooh, good preston what would you like to eat for lunch what's the best thing uh freddy's on the weekdays sometimes uh on and uh, Chinese and Jersey Mike's. Oh, that is the best. I think for me, Jimmy John's is my favorite thing to eat for lunch. Or I like rice and chicken. That's probably what I eat most days at like school or work. Yeah. So, all right. Well, very good. Well, this, our question, uh, has a lot to do with our story for today. So we've been in the one story plan where we've been reading through the whole Bible in one year, bouncing from story to story, seeing who God is. And then now we're seeing who Jesus is through like his life and how he lived and what he did. So today, if you are in the one story plan, we are in day 274 and we are in John 6. So uh, I'm going to read the passage and then we'll talk about it. So it says this, John 6. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of uh, Tiberias. A huge crowd kept following him wherever he went because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Has that ever happened to you before? Someone asked you like a question and they already knew the answer to it? Think about like a teacher at school. Have they ever asked you a question and they already knew the answer? Yeah, I have this really funny teacher named Mr. Swapler, and he'll always ask us like funny questions to see like if we're like really listening or if Mm -hmm. it's just for funny. I think, I think Jesus was doing this to Philip. He's like, how are we going to feed all these people? And Philip's probably looking all the, all, at all the people like, I have no idea. And Jesus is like, yeah, I know what we're going to do. Okay, so we'll keep going. Verse 7, Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Do you think... Five loaves and two fish. Would that even feed us right here, right now? No. No, no. I don't know how much you eat, Preston, but I eat a lot. I do. <laughs> you do too? I eat a lot since I'm like 11 years old. And yeah. yeah. I oh, yeah. like eat two or three or four plates of food. Oh, yeah. Or dinner. I, I eat like a dozen tacos. I love tacos. Okay, hold on. Same. Let's get back to our story. Okay, Same. so. Same. This is what it says in verse 10. Tell everyone to sit down. Sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. 
Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. But everyone was full. Oh, after everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers, said that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. Okay, so a couple things. How many, uh, what did they eat for lunch that day? Uh, Fish and bread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how many, how many things of bread? Five. And how many fish? Two. Two. Now, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, you guys have caught fish before, right? Yeah, I Now, have. do you think those two fish, we'll count yours, pressing yours as well. Do you think that could fi- feed 5,000 people? No, no way. No. Mine was like a baby. <laughs> yeah. And mine was like, um, uh, like a mama. Yeah. Or like medium. Medium size. Now, I think if this kid was carrying around his lunchbox, okay, and he had two fish and five loaves, I'm sure he was like, there's no way this could feed all this, all these people. And it does, it actually doesn't even say he offered. It was like, he was like, oh, this kid has his lunch. This is what he has. What can we do with it? And they did, and Jesus did this miracle. Now, what was the thing he did? What did, what did Jesus do before he gave out all the food? He prayed. Yeah. Says he gave thanks to God. He said, God, thank you for this food. Have you ever done that before you eat meals? Yeah, I do it at lunch at home and sometimes at dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Really almost every day. Yeah. This is like where that comes from is that Jesus prayed before he ate, like before they broke the food and ate. And so it's kind of where we, where we get that from. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that he prayed, he broke the bread, and they distributed it to everyone. It said that everyone, uh, after everyone was full. Now, we were just talking about how much food we can eat. Could you imagine eating all this food, being full, and then they're like, all right, we'll take the scraps. And you're like, I thought there were only five pieces of bread and two fish. Yeah. How's there leftovers? There's 5,000 people here. That's different. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Now... Uh, I know I know people can't see our faces, but in words, how would you how would you react if you saw this? Like all these people were eating and now there's leftovers still. I would be very shocked. Yeah. I'd I, be like do a flip in the water. Oh yeah. I would be amazed. I'd be like, this is incredible. How awesome is this? And that's what everyone did. They were like, whoa, like surely he is the prophet we've been expecting. Like he has to be the Messiah, the savior. And then they try to, they're about to force him to be their king, but he gets away. He slips away. And and then we pick up with him later. But after reading this story, what would you think this teaches us about who Jesus is? What does it teach us? Well, like he can do basically anything. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You agree? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's a miracle worker, isn't he? Yeah. Like yeah, we've totally. sang songs like that Incredible. before in, in, in church or in Grace Kids, yeah. like Miracle Worker. Yeah. Promise keeper, light in the dark. <laughs> I'll I'll stop well, myself. I, thought I, you you are. Are. I thought I could stop myself, but I can't. Yeah, he's a miracle worker. Like he can do miraculous things. And another thing it made me think about too was that um this this boy, he had this lunch. He had this lunch and he gave it up. To Jesus to do something amazing with it. And do you think the boy knew what Jesus was going to do? No. 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 Definitely I, not. Yeah, I don't think so. But he gave it up anyway. Yeah. He trusted and he didn't even really know what was going to happen. But he mm-hmm. gave it up anyway. Yeah. And and that reminds me too that like for us, we can, we can hand it. things over to God for him to do great big things with. Even if we don't know what he's going to do with it. So... All right. Well, last thing, what is a challenge we could give our listeners? Hmm. What's a challenge? To trust in God, like, even though, like, you don't see him, like, practice having him for, like, a day. Sometimes I like to imagine him, like, in the car in the front seat Mm -hmm. while we're going to school or something like that. Yeah, Yeah. like, imagine he trusting in me, like, playing sports 
or yeah. like doing dance or doing art. Yeah. Or music. Yeah, absolutely. Music. We can picture him everywhere with us, right? Yeah, yeah. that's a great show. Definitely. Yeah. I think Definitely. another one is to maybe there's something that we have that we can that like maybe we should we could pray about. God, what is something that that I have that I want to give to you to do something great? And I don't even know what you're going to do with it, but I'm going to give it up and I'm going to give it to you and see what happens because he is a miracle worker. Yeah. He can do great yeah. things with the stuff we yeah. have. So awesome. All right. Well, that wraps up the end of our podcast today. Thank you so much for listening. And for now, we'll say see ya. Bye. If you would like more resources regarding the One Story Plan, go to visitgracechurch.com backslash one story. And if you'd like more resources for your kids, you can go to visitgracechurch.com backslash kids. We also have a YouTube channel, and you can find it by searching Visit Grace Kids on YouTube. If you like this podcast, we would love for you to like, subscribe, share, and leave us a comment. We'll see you soon.